Hello, can you hear me? What up, dude? I can hear you. How you doing? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm chilling. Uh, how's how's everything been going since last time we talked again this time? Um, it's going okay. Okay. Well, I, I I dropped a lot, and I I don't know why I just came back. Like right before our coaching session, I, I gained three hundred for no reason. I don't know why. Eh, I mean, it happens. Yeah. Uh, I feel like sometimes ladder sessions, you know, like you'll play against a series of people that aren't really the best against your play style. And sometimes you'll play against people that are like really good against your play style. Um, so, I mean, it, it, you definitely, if you have a good run versus opponents that you just do well against, you can definitely have a nice, like overall, like, wow, I'm suddenly way higher than I am. But if, you know, if you hit the other kind of opponent, that would have been harder for you to deal with based on how they play their play style. Like, like you might be playing more passive games or like people who just aren't that good at aggression trying to be aggressive or something. So it's, it's literally just random. Yeah, so today um, I, I, I think we I want to go over TVP. I realize we never go over my TVP build at all. Okay. And I want to refine it. Yeah. And then I have some general questions. And on other than that, I have two small questions like one in tvz and one in tvp but or a tvt i think it's just a minor um micro question sure i think if you want you can ask them now or we can do it later whatever you whatever sounds good uh yeah so uh in tvz right so when i pre-split i pre-split the marines and then i siege up the tanks uh, right outside the creep tomb or uh, the the creep yep. right and then when i want to move forward when i a move they just clump up together uh-huh like so okay yeah. There's the, a couple ways you can do this is you can green box it the entire time or if you a move to move forward you have to pre-split again like you have to then respread them out uh, so one way you could do this that's super easy is if you're gonna move your tank up let's just say like you're let's say you have uh, like five tanks and maybe like five medevacs and uh, 50 Marines or something like like a decently sized army uh, if you already pre-spread them out, you could uh, spread out your Marines, like, you know, some of them in your front of your tank, some on the side of your tank, some on the back of your tanks, a few in the middle of your tanks. Maybe, like, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're talking, like, groups of, like, eight Marines or five Marines or whatever here and there. Uh, and your tanks are scattered. If you want to push a tank forward, just unseize that one tank, move it forward, and then just green box the Marines next to it and move it with the tank or something like that. And just be like, okay, you guys go forward because you're in, not in a rush. There is no rush there to be like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. Because if you take a really good fight, then you rush, and then the Zerg doesn't have something to stop you with. But if you take a really bad fight because you're rushing it before the Zerg engages you, now you have to be exceptional at micro during the fight. And then if you're not, you're just gonna get run over, and then now suddenly you're on the defensive the entire time because Zerg has control, and you can't stop creep anymore and all that shit. Okay. So you're, it's totally fine to slowly push it because you're waiting for the fight. And the more off creep you are, the better. So, like, you should try to only have your, like, your, uh, the way you just said in the start of that, where you're like, I siege just outside of creep range. That's fucking perfect. And then you literally keep shoving creep back with just the edge of your army repeatedly. You don't, you don't, uh, dive your whole army onto it, right? And the A move up forward again. Uh, like the, the, one of the really th good things that you can do as well is if the Zerg is not really super actively there in your face and he's not zoning you very well, you can take just like eight Marines and one medevac and you can scan forward a really greedy fucking scan to be like, all right, I'm going to scan a big clump of your creep. I'm going to stim pack just eight Marines forward and I'm not going to have a control group of this. I'm just going to green box it and I'm going to quickly spend about three seconds to five seconds just wiping out like eight creep tumors. And if you show up, I just load up my Marines in the medevac, boost back to my tank, unload my tank. Okay. And then when I'm set up, when I'm already set up and then I'm trying to engage with Zerg when Zerg charges me, uh -huh. I, I'm not supposed to aim move, right? Because they just clump up together. Yeah. Do I hold? You should literally just let it come at you. The only time you should ever aim move is uh, once you've weathered the Storm of Banes. Once that's over, then that's fine. But if you... Okay. It, it, the you, you can't. I just want to make this very clear. You totally can a move, but it's going to mean that you every time you do that, you have to respread. But if you don't a move, you'll take a more passively good engagement. It's not the best. So like, I just want you to know that a moving and then respreading, if you're really good at it, is always going to be better. 
it will because you're maximizing DPS more because you're getting more you're guarding the first tank a lot better and you're gonna get that tank's gonna get more shots off you're gonna get more DPS off and then you're gonna move at the last second but that means that you at that last second you can't make a mistake because if you do it's gonna not be worth it it's gonna be like negative if you just didn't move at all so it's okay. something you can practice it's something that you can try every now and again but if you want to just have clean engagements for now definitely just like pre-spread and just stand there okay cool uh yeah that's the question you have a did you say you have a question about tvt as well it's more of a how do i deal with mass bcs but uh, i don't think it's a short answer no there is there it is, super is uh so if you're if you realize your opponent's going bcs two options are great uh an initial option would be if you have a couple of like raven already from the early game if those are still alive that's a it, it fucking just maintain those and never drop turrets just like use your disable matrix thing the disable the, the, the vehicle disable and that that'll help a lot but a really good way to deal with bcs if your opponent's legit just going mass bcs is you can expand a little bit more you can add on a couple more turrets to your base like just to help cover your base and then you can uh keep making marines for now and make like an extra two or pr probably t probably two honestly that's kind of a lot it depends how many bases you're at i would say whatever base count you're at add like go up to about that many starports so if you're on three bases add two more if you're on four bases add three more but probably go only do a total of like four starports and then stop because four is actually super fucking expensive like so if you're on like six bases don't add on five starports to go to six total starports it's a bit excessive uh but what you do is you keep making marines you make the amount of whatever total base count you're at that make that in starports and then land, like just put it next to your reactor barracks and then as soon as the starport's done lift off the racks lift off the starport swap the starport into the reactors and then you can make your racks into whatever the fuck you want you can make it into more reactors or you could even make it into tech labs and the reason why you could do that is because you can make just marauders with vikings and you could have marauders just run the base over really hard they'll deal with tanks better they'll deal with like pfs better they'll deal with any type of the base better than a marine would and if you uh just start making a bunch of vikings there is a tipping point where vikings dominate bcs and that tipping point is when you have enough vikings to weather the storm of yamato cannon and then still also burst bcs down so and a, a good number for that would be is you have double the bc count plus maybe even a few more anything over double is like you're gonna crush but if you have at least double you can still get you modded and still wreck bcs so like if he has 12 bcs and you have 24 vikings you will fucking destroy that because if even if you models all 12 and you still have 12 viking versus 12 bc 12 vikings can actually like two to three shot a bc and you can always shoot the bc back up shoot the bc back up shoot it back up and if you do this well a viking flies faster than a bc and it has more range than a bc so he literally can't attack you and uh, he can't run away either because you can chase him down. Okay. And I have one question for you really fast about micro. Do you yes. do you know about air units with gliding them? Uh, do you know what I mean? No. So if you micro your command, if you like initiate your commands fast enough, where I'm going to give you, I want you to like close your eyes and visualize really fast, like one Viking flying away from one battlecruiser. And then you, you tell the Viking to attack. The Viking does not slam the brakes and then stop immediately and then shoot the battlecruiser and then start moving from nothing when you do that. It, all, it, it, it will feel like it does that if you don't micro fast enough to a degree. But in StarCraft 2, what happens is, is if you have a Viking flying away from a BC, that it's not currently getting shot by the BC, but it's still within range to shoot at the BC because it has longer range than the battlecruiser. If you tell it to it, if you tell the Viking to attack the battlecruiser, the Viking will turn around while floating backwards it'll glide backwards for a sec because it's it's losing it's uh, it's decelerating ex essentially it's not slamming to a halt it decelerates and then you attack during that and then you turn it and you tell it to move as the attack animation starts and if you can what you can do is you can actually make the unit attack during the glide backwards and then you can tell it to go forwards again before it stops gliding so it still has momentum going the entire time and you do it again and you do it again and the way you do this is you get really comfortable at telling your unit to attack and then telling it to move as the attack animation starts. 
And I would say practice that if you struggle against something like BCs and you struggle at using Vikings like that. Because this also owns like Void Rays. Uh, if you're like getting Void Ray proxied and you want to like glide your Vikings back. If like if he, ch if he like lures you back to batteries and then you back up to your base when he starts pushing you. You can glide your BC and kite him like this. Or sorry, you can glide your Viking and kite Voids like this and get more shots off without letting the Voids catch up to you. And it, this works in a lot of things in the game. It's all, all air units have this kind of concept. Ground units don't. Ground units don't glide like that because they're not like on ice. But air has a different physic. It has different physics in, in StarCraft where it glides when you... It doesn't ever stop. It just decelerates and it then accelerates again. Uh, so, does that make sense? What I just explained? Yeah, yes. yes uh, okay, so I'd definitely say just get the feel for it. Maybe go to like a custom game and like just have a battle cruiser auto attack a Viking and then just try to kite it and see how well you do at it and try to really get good at like doing it right as the attack animation starts not when it finishes like if you're telling your viking to move when the missiles connect to the battle cruiser you're moving way too late you need to tell your viking to move as the missiles start flying out of the viking that's the perfect time to move and it, you have to like predict it as well you can't watch for easy reaction because it's always the same anyways so if you get the feel for it like it's almost like a it's like a rhythm you do on the on the micro there okay all right uh any other questions no, no. Okay. That's that's it. Um, for for the replay, it's mostly refining the build order, and um, I I feel like I'm prioritizing the wrong things in um, PvP. Like I don't know the exact time when I should put down the third. Um, I feel like I'm making too much mirages. Okay. Uh, so I'm kind of starving. Sure. Yeah. Uh, do you want to share? Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, 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 I thought we were, uh, yeah, I was just listening. I kind of forgot to turn my screen on. Uh, you should be able to see. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, actually, let's turn this off. I want to see your genuine perspective. <laughs> so, the only time I'd ever say, like, Heavy Marauder is going to actually kind of bite you in the ass a little bit is, uh, realistically, when the Protoss is going Stargate really early. And then if they go start it really early, it wouldn't be the worst option to go heavier marine and maybe even supplement like widow mines or something in your army. But uh, Marauder definitely is not going to be the ideal situation if it's Stargate. If it's not Stargate though, you definitely can punish Protoss a lot with Marauder heavy. Uh, you just have to. We'll, we'll we'll see what goes on here in this game, but we'll get some ideas on how, what you're doing. Uh, but being able to concussive down things is amazing if it's like heavy gateway and being able to punish things with AoE like uh, like Colossus with Marauder is so, 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 so good. And if you don't have enough Marauder, you'll just die if for like early game stuff. Okay, so that doesn't really matter that much. They took your gas. It's a little annoying, but it's not the end of the world. I would say now they took your gas, though, you should definitely prioritize the faster gas at your natural when you expand. Or, no, just, just kidding. He didn't cancel it, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so this, I don't like this at all. I know you probably did this because you were uh, uh, distracted by the probe in your base, and you're like, God, fucking probe is annoying, what it, you know, as it is. But definitely, uh, if you don't have a, if you have an SCV that's just, like, barely starting as the Rax is done, which this SCV was, like, I think three seconds of production when your Rax finished, you definitely want to make sure that's an orbital priority. This is going to slow you down. And if you let the second one finish as well, okay, good, you canceled it. I'm glad you, I'm, I, good, good fucking understanding there. I'm glad you did. Could have been a little faster, but uh, the, the fact that you did that is really good. Because that fucking mule energy is so much more valuable than SCVs. <clears throat> Alright, so now you can see where his base is. You see that you're, he's blocking the Reaper jump spot. Uh, just build a command center on the side of this. If he does that, good job. Okay. The Grim Reaper has arrived. Yeah, your scout was fine. I'm not. Uh, I don't really mind your scout at all. You, you got into his base and you saw that he's just basically not proxying you. That's really all this is gonna tell you. Like, oh, he's expanding and he's playing normal. You don't know anything yet, though. Other than that, but you did. You have ruled out proxies are not a thing now, so that's good. I don't. I don't mind that you scouted the way you did, and then you're gonna follow it up with the Reaper. Definitely don't try to jump here, though. Because that's not going to work. 
you're gonna jump, either jump there or just go straight into the fucking natural. But also, this Reaper. I'm gonna back it up and watch. I'm gonna watch the Reaper entirely, actually. I wanna watch when you start it out of your, out of your barracks. I wanna see how much time is missed. Okay, that was like one or two seconds. Not the hugest deal there yet. Okay, Reaper spawns, goes around, it does not stop, which is good, but then it stops right here, right, like for how long though? Because this is gonna, the reason why I'm really harping on this is because this changes how you're gonna use your Reaper. You need to, uh, if you if you have the intention to kill any probes at all ever, you need to not waste a single second ever. Whether build it's building it or whether it's moving it, it needs to not be wasted at all because every second that goes by, you're losing an opportunity to do DP DPS through a probe. Uh, so it's it gets here and it sits here for that's three, four, about four seconds. So you missed about one or two seconds on the build initially, and you missed about four seconds there on sitting. And now you're going for the left as well. So now what you should be doing is definitely playing a more conservative passive reaper and just scouting the front of his base and seeing what he's building like he'll show you what units he has maybe do a quick pop up pop down see if you can just spot a tech building there he might build tech on the side of his pylon here if he wants to build his second pylon like at the natural or something maybe for like a quick battery uh you know he could build a pylon over here too that's totally fine but you might be able to spot early tech like especially if like what if he skips warp gate and goes for faster tech building because he wants to do some crazy ass fucking rush uh, so yeah, okay, your Reaper's sitting there again. Your Reaper usage definitely could be improved. It's not, this is not doing it. You wasted a lot of time there. Your Reaper got here at three tw at, uh, 227, and it's 241, and you're just leaving from 227 to 241. It took you uh, 14 seconds to get here from there. So definitely missed a lot of time there. And now your Reaper is probably just going to die because... Uh, you're committing, and this is look at where the tech is, right? That's why I said if you actually jump up, jump down, you would have saw that anyways, and your Reaper would not have died. Chances of your Reaper dying right now are really high because you waited too long. Nice grenade, but it still might still not be enough. Yep, you're just dead. So the only reason why that happened is because you waited so long. So in the future, definitely try to. Here's here's a tip as well. This is where it gets complicated as well for Terran. If you wait too long on the Reaper, if you delay it by building it too late, or if you get there and you sit there and you wait, you only have about probably like five seconds as you get to a Protoss's base most of the time before you're ready to like do an add-on swap. And if you wait too long, you're going to be still not in his base yet doing something with an initiation of command. And then you're going to be like, well, now I got to fucking make a reactor. I got to lift it off. I got to land it. Do I got to swip. I got to do some shit. I got to build something here. I got to go back and macro cycle, do something at my base. It just gets a little bit hectic for it, like a second there. And you definitely want to make sure that you're doing things like add-on swapping or add-on creation or lifting and landing buildings when your Reaper already has a command. So if you got into his base and you saw as you're like right here, his unit's right there chasing you, you could be like, cool. Right click, shift, right click, right, shift, right click. Like, so you're going, your Reaper's going from here to there to there to there. And you're just going to go take a pass behind his mineral line. And that gives you like two seconds or three seconds to go quickly lift, land, reactor, make, make bunker, whatever you want to do. And, uh, you know, then go back and catch your Reaper before it gets to its final destination. And then you can throw a grenade and run as you, as you will or whatever. Like, it's, uh, and though if you, the way you built your, I think you might, I can't remember if you, I think you built your racks like this in the first place, which makes it even easier because then you could actually just do it through a hockey. So you actually could do something like attack a probe and be like, uh, one C while attacking probe, which would be one reactor because C is the hockey for a reactor. If you didn't change your hockeys or if you use standard hockeys, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's really just, you don't want to wait on it too long because then it makes shit too confusing because then you got to deal with the Reaper and also deal with your base at that, like that, that moment where it shit shifts a little bit and it becomes really, really confusing. Or it just becomes too much at one point for a second. And that Reaper definitely didn't really pay for itself very well. You did at least see the, the Twilight Council. 
I would say this. Okay, I'm gonna say this. This is a way that is really it makes a lot of sense. I feel like, and it might have been something I've already told you before. If this was like you were trying to get into Diamond League, if you were like a platinum player and you were trying to get into Diamond League, and that's what your goal was, I'd be like, that was a good scout, good job. You saw his, you saw his tech. That's all you really needed to do there. You now know he's not going for a robo or a council first. He's going for. Oh, uh, sorry. You know, you know, he's not going for a robo or a stargate first. You know, he's going council. So this is probably going to be like a blink stalker timing, or it could even be DTs. But that you know, that that is a possibility, but maybe not. Uh, he might even go for depths. He might go for a charge lot. He could do anything with the council first. So that's all on the table. So good job. You now have limited his build to those options. But now that you're in diamond and you're trying to progress through and get better at diamond, that reaper definitely did not do enough. That reaper needs to maintain multiple scouts so you can really confirm what it because this doesn't tell you anything it tells you options of what it could be but if you scouted again later because you saved a reaper and you saw a really quick robo behind it and a dark shrine or a really quick robo behind it and a chrono boosted council or no chrono boosted or sorry a chrono boosted council and like no robo or no dark shrine and then let's say you saw a fucking probe over here making a proxy fucking gateway or something like or no current boost at all, and like you saw fast third. Like it's, and there's stalkers there or something, and he's going for defensive blink. Like having a second scout is definitely going to give you more of a read, because right now all you know is, okay, one adept and a, and a council. That's fucking so many, that, that's still like seven builds possibly. And it doesn't really limit it enough, and you need to know these things to have a better plan going forward. Because here's an example of what I mean by that, okay? If you identify a defensive build from Protoss, you could easily take a third base and not feel pressured, and you could, you know, prioritize your your SCVs, your depots, uh, keep adding in units whenever you can, but definitely prioritize those SCVs. But if this was, and then like maybe even delay your tech a little bit because you're gonna go a little bit longer on minerals, you'll take it because that's what a third costs, and you'll take gas a little bit later so that you can eventually take your medivacs. It's a greedier way to play it out. But if you saw, it was like really fast dark shrine. I'd be like, okay, well, now maybe you want to get, like, a faster gas. And instead of having to always spend a bunch of fucking energy on scans, you could either... Or you, you could either prioritize minerals and get faster turrets, or prioritize gas and get, like, a faster raven, and then go into medivax and marine marauder. So that you could have something something for detection for DTs. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta... That second scout definitely gives you way more of a read on what the fuck you probably should do as, like, a generic plan for what you're gonna go for. Uh... Yeah, but uh, what's the time to do the second scout? Probably like 30 seconds after the first. Which is right now. So if your Reaper got to his base at like around like 220 or so, and you got into yeah. his base, you realistically would get into his base and then get out of his base by probably like 245. Like if you got okay. if you did not waste a second, you know what I mean? If you just win. SC2 coaching uh, for wall is the number 1,316. If, if you... uh. If you get into his base and you scout everything, um, or you, you just take a lap, essentially, you're definitely not going to get in and get out within two seconds. It's going to take you a little bit of time, especially if you're avoiding, like, a unit that's trying to kill you. Uh, but if you get out, let's say you get out at 245, you just go back in again. It doesn't have to be exactly 30, but it has to be somewhere or maybe, like, 30 to 45. So if you get out at 245, go back in there at, like, 315 to 330. Because the reason why that is really relevant is why that means something there is because tech structures in this game almost always take around 30 to 45 seconds. Like, so, and that's, you know, no one, if they're going to do a build that's going to be an attack, and they're like, you know what, I'm going to make a council, then I'm going to wait for 30 seconds, and then I'll make a dark shrine after the council's done. Nobody's going to do that. Everyone's going to prioritize whatever build they're going to go for if they're going to go for something aggressive. The only time people don't have a super assertive, like, build time on tech structures is when they're not going to be aggressive and they're going to expand instead. So if you got to his base again and you saw nothing advanced from that point and you saw no extra gas or something like that, uh, hypothetically, or you saw a chrono boosted nexus, like all these things are big info pieces here where you're like, okay, yeah, no, this guy most likely looks like he's going for a third. Like this guy's definitely not gearing up for a lot of gates and a chrono boosted building structure. He's just chrono boosting probes and he's got barely anything else from what he had 40 seconds ago probably gonna expand for to a third any second now and then there you go lo and behold your reaper gets out of his base you see a third you just confirm what your suspicions are and you 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 basically try to make good reads on what you think makes sense out of what he's doing 
And like I said before, this all you can tell from this is the potential of Charge Lot, Adept, Stalker with Blink, DTs, and it could either be aggressive or defensive. So there's a lot of range there for Protoss so far. Doesn't have to be all in just because he made a council. He could totally go Blink defensive. Okay. I think that's my problem, because when I see a console, I default it to be... Uh, Aggressive? Aggression. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times it is, but... So, like, someone who goes Blink Stalker could 100% attack you with Blink Stalkers. They could 100% attack you with the Glaives, uh, with Adept, which would probably pair more... So, let's, here's another detail, okay? Here's, here's another sign of uh, detail to things. If you see a Robo that is really fast... The faster the robo, the more likely it's going to be aggressive. Okay? Because the faster the robo, the more likely he's going to use it to get that robo unit across the map to then use whatever he wants to use out of those gateways. And most likely do something like maybe a... Uh, uh, what's it called? A... Uh, yeah, thank you. Jesus, I don't know why it was, I could not say the word there. A prism, yes. You're correct. <laughs> yeah. Uh... But if he's got a later robo, it's probably more for like an observer. And an observer is very relevant to Protoss because tons of Terrans do things like Widow Mind Drops and Banshee Cloak Openers and shit like that. So Protoss definitely needs to have some type of detection to play defensive. But uh, if the Protoss wanted to, they could totally, you know, if they're going to get a really fast robo, that, that's definitely the more likely aggressive option. Um... And then also another detail is, again, if you see Chrono Boosted Council here, the more if you ever see Chrono, yeah, it's aggressive. Most likely. Most people don't Chrono Boost their Council if they're going to be defensive. They don't have to do that. They, they're probably going to Chrono Boost their probes instead and just defend because they're not going to leave their base, so they're just going to be here anyways, just chilling. And then when you show up, they deal with it, and then, move, you know, life goes on. This could... It, it's it's okay what I just said as well. There are situations where Chrono Boosting your Council could actually be defensive as well. Uh, and the reason why, th this is why Pernas definitely has a lot of range, is they could actually just go for not only Blink, but also Charge, because that, if they just go for Mass Charge Lot Blink Stalker, that actually would shut down a lot of Terran timings as well, if they just want to go heavy Council, and if they're going to do something like that, if your Reaper goes into the main and spots, oh, okay, double gas, and a Council opener, and let's say your Reaper goes back and checks the natural really quick, because again, you're trying not to, you're trying not to let it die, uh... Or let's say your Reaper gets into the main and you send one SCV to the natural. Or like you scan the natural. And at some point, like around like maybe 345 to 4 minutes. And you go, oh cool, 16 probes on the middle line and there's no gas. And this guy's only making stalkers right now. Like that's, that's definitely a sign to go, okay, this guy doesn't ever want to take his gas. Definitely going to stay on the gateway units longer. So this could either be an aggressive timing attack, which would be paired with gateways. Or it's going to be a third base really greedy, which is going to be paired with less gates and just a really fucking fast third base. And that's why the Reaper needs to stay alive. Sorry sorry to interrupt you. But the Reaper needs to stay alive so that you can actually make multiple reads. That's why I said your scout this game didn't tell you anything. That's why it's so confusing. Okay. So basically you cannot tell what Protoss is doing by only checking once of his uh, tech choice. You need to combine that with... Um multiple scouts to, to, to check either the gas count, uh, where the chrono boost is, uh, is he taking a third and the gateway counts to decide if he's on the aggression or greed yep. side or defense side, right? Correct. And uh, that's why that the game gets more advanced like that as you grow as a player. And that's why if your quest right now is to get to like Master's League, this is something you need to start working on as well. You need to keep, you need to go for more than one scout into the base. Because if that's, if that's what the average is for you right now, where you get in and you just die, Especially if your Reaper sits there for 14 seconds and then goes in and dies. It's like guaranteeing it's going to die. And that's why I was like, with how long you waited, probably just poke the edges of his base instead of going deep anymore. And try to get reads on what's on the outsides. So get reads on here, leave, like go up, go down. And be like, oh, cancel, cool. And then come back maybe 30 seconds later and be like, are you chrono boosting that shit? Or like, what's going on here? Poke the front of his base and leave. Be like, are you making stalkers? Are you making adepts? Are, what are you making? Are you making nothing? Are you making just one unit? The less units he has, the more likely he's making something like maybe DTs. The more units he has, the more likely whatever unit it is, it's getting chrono boosted, and or that that upgrade is being researched at least. Uh, so in the case where my Reaper actually died, do you think it's worth it to throw down a scan? Not yet. Around? Not yet. Probably like four minutes. But yeah. Okay. 
Like, and if, if you scanned oh, as well, I would tell you, yeah. you should probably scan, like, right here. And the reason why is because if you look at the middle of the screen, okay? I want you to look at the middle of the screen. And I want you to picture if you could make a perfect circle in the middle of the screen to where, like, th the top of the screen is revealed, the circle kind of comes down a little bit on the sides, and then it gets to, like, almost the entire left side, and then it goes down a little bit, and it goes into the fog, like, the, the bottom of your command card thing a little bit. It comes back up to the right a little bit, and it goes almost to the edge, and it goes back up again. Like, if you make a per like a, just a big, fat circle in the middle, that's where the scan's going to be. So if you scan, like, right here, you could actually not only see saturation, gas, unit comp, tech. Now, he could make a pilot over here and make some fucking Stargate right there or something. But if you scan, like, right here, for instance, you're not going to see anything about the natural. And this scan right here would give you the majority of high, the, the highest odds possible to know what the hell is going on. Because this is info that you need to know. That is info that you need to know. How much chrono boost is he doing? How much allocation is he doing to economy? Like, does his, his mineral line look like yours? Or does his mineral line look better than yours? His should definitely look better than yours. And the reason why his should look better than yours is because he doesn't have to make orbitals like you do. So you lose the ability to make workers during the time that you make an orbital, which is 25 seconds. And then he also chrono boosts his probes if he wants to. So if you see that mineral line right now, that dude should have probably like seven probes. Or something like that. Not three. Uh, so that would be... like you know, I'm not telling you to scan right now, obviously. But if we got to like four minutes, we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, but we'll, we'll move forward for now. But your build overall is still fine. Okay? It's like the idea of it is still... It still makes sense. It's just getting, a, getting more of an understanding of what you're up against. You can alter it to be one of two things. More greedy, more defensive. Based on... If, obviously, if he's going to attack you, the more defensive option makes more sense. If he's going to be greedy, the more greedy option makes sense. You could also yeah, be really aggressive too versus someone who's going to be greedy if you wanted to. Yes, basically what I'm doing right now is if I see uh, Twilight, I make factory and tanks. And then if I see Robo, I just skip factory and make a third. If I see Star Stargate, I just all in. That's basically what I do right now. Okay. Uh, uh, but I guess so I need to be more concrete on how to tell the you, actual intention. Right? Yeah, and they, exactly. And right now you can't, as we just described. It's this what's mm -hmm. making it hard for you. So yeah. we'll go forward, and we'll, we'll we'll pause it again around four minutes, and we'll we'll talk more about that. But right now, I would say, if you wanted to make tanks, okay, stop at one or two. Make sure, like, do not make mass tanks. I would not recommend that, especially since your tanks are going to be super delayed because you're going for like a plus one weapons, and all this kind of shit first, which is great. I don't mind this at all. But going tanks here, I definitely would not recommend making like five tanks or eight tanks or something. <laughs> Alright, so here, SCV's back to mining. And then you're making your add-ons, making your units. Okay, I'm going to pause the game right here, and we're going to talk a little bit more about a couple things. Your bunker placement is fine. I actually, like, it's it's not the end of the world, but I, I would actually almost recommend that you put it back a little bit further. Because this bunker zones out stalkers really well, especially if it's full, so they can't really harass anything else. But if you put the bunker, like, right there, you would still zone out the stalkers, because they would have to cross the bunker to be able to attack anything else, because they'd have to go through here get slammed by your bunker, go through here, get slammed by your bunker. So if you put the bunker there, the reason why that would be really nice instead is because, um, and, and we'll, we'll, I know your command center is also out of place, so if that's why you put it here, uh, try to put it down as soon as you lift the command center instead of before, because there won't be an adept that fast anyways, okay. unless it's proxied, okay. and uh, you already confirmed it wasn't proxied with your SCV scout. Um, but if you put it right here, this is huge because you cover the mineral line better, so you're, it, there's less time when your SUVs can be smacked by an adept because you're closer to it. And you also cover the ramp better in case he, like, shades in right here. That way you don't have to run so far. Because if you have to run really far and he, and he shades in here, 
He can actually have more time chasing your marines and smacking them until they get back in the bunker. And then he just backs off as you get near the bunker and goes back to here, which is a lot of room to work with for him. The more room, the better for Protoss. The less room, the better for Terran. So if you congest it a little bit and you make it closer, you definitely make it harder for him to attack with the devs. And it still zones out stalkers. Uh, now, talking about Protoss, again, if we scan, like, right here. Look at your mineral line now. You have eight. So if you scan, like, right here, and you saw this... This is not the most invested economy. Straight up. So automatically, I'm not going to look at anything in this guy's base. Automatically, because we'll pretend this is just a scan, okay? Even though the scan would see a little bit more south than this, this is a lot of info, though. Because the Protoss has no more economy than you do. That's not fucking good for Protoss. He also has no gases yet. So automatically, if I were you playing this game and I, and I scanned this because my Reaper died, I would automatically now be thinking, no third. Yep, this guy probably doesn't want to prioritize the third. I don't really expect that. I fully expect this guy to be more on the aggressive side. So, and also there's no gas here either. So it's probably not going to be tech related. We're not thinking, I'm not, I wouldn't be thinking to myself immediately being like, he's rushing DTs because it's going to be really tight on him being able to make DTs. So it's probably not going to be the case here. Uh, but what pro what could be the case is he totally could be chrono boosting out the council. He could be making more more gateways if he wanted to. He could be doing something else if he wanted to. He might not. No one play like I'm not even saying that this guy has to be playing perfect here. It's just that that's a bad sign for his economy because even if you're wrong and you play a little bit safer because you're expecting aggression, he's still not going to really be ahead anyways because he's not really prioritizing his economy the way he should be. But it would make sense that he's going to prioritize aggression because he's not prioritizing his economy. Okay. Because he doesn't have more... Okay. So, based on his natural uh, probe count, we know he is not going to take a third. Otherwise, he would have more probes. Yes. So, he's probably going on the aggression side. Yes. And, uh, and because he doesn't have two gases here, he's not going that aggressive. He's not going that heavy into tech. Even... So if he is going to attack you, it's going to be something that's easier to obtain with gas. It's not going to be like four DTs. Is that takes a oh. lot of gas to tech to it and build that. Okay. Uh, so, because you, again, you got to keep in mind too, Terran develops SCVs the slowest early game, and Protoss actually develops SCVs the fastest because Protoss gets Chrono Boost before like Zerg gets Larva Inject. So this guy, absolutely, 100%, if he was making economy the entire time, should have like 16 probes or like 15 probes on this base already scattered around whatever he wants to be doing with it not eight eight is like he, the only way he could ever have eight probes on this middle line right now when you have eight scvs on yours is if he cut probes and you're not cutting scvs so if he's cutting probes why is he cutting probes it's not to take a third base so it seems aggressive it's either it's either bad macro or it seems aggressive Okay. And if you just take it in the sense that you go, okay, it's going to be aggressive. That's why I said if it's bad macro and he's actually going to take a third. If you play defensive but he's macroing poorly, you're still fine. Um, even when I play defensive, uh, should I plan to take my third after factory before starport? Or should I take it after starport? Uh, I'd say probably before, and the reason before starport, or third before starport, because you're not. So this answer it changes based on how prioritized your gas is. The way you're actually prioritizing your gas, I would now actually say probably starport before third. This is a lot of like this gas is fine. This gas is a bit much for third base okay. first, because you're allocating a lot into your gas now. So, but and that's fine if you want to go starport first. So I hope that makes sense. But yeah, it's really it comes down to what your choices are with how early you take your gas. Okay, just basically saying both is fine, but if I want to go starport first, I take more gases. If I want to do third base first, I take less gases. Yeah, because think about um, it think about it like this. Like this one gas is already enough to maintain your unit production and like your upgrade out of your barracks. Totally fine. This second yes. gas is enough to support now the factory. This third okay. gas is gonna support what? If you go for a third command center, you're going to have a gas bank. Okay. SCV ready. Go 
I like your scouting. It's good. I, li I, li I like that you're uh, trying to give yourself a little bit of a net of vision here and figure things out. Uh, you know, this, if this did walk by something, it would definitely be uh, nice. And I like that. It looks like you're also going towards the thirds, which is also really fucking good. I, your scout right here is ballin'. I do this shit a lot. Uh, like, you don't need to do this as much if your Reaper was still alive. Because you could be, like, poking in and out. And I know it, it seems annoying because you're always having a Reaper, like, doing shit. But if you actually can keep your Reaper alive other than sacrificing it, your Marines don't need to be doing this. Your Reaper could be doing this. But really good shit, though. I'm glad that you're still doing it in general because that's such an important... Like, right now is perfect as well, How you, the timing of when you're doing it. Trying to spot for a third by about five minutes is really, really good. Okay, so your build order is fine with how you're doing it. You should definitely try to squeeze in a third soon now, though. Because you have this, you have a good economy. A little bit light in your main, though, because you actually took SCVs off for the gas. Try to make sure you definitely uh, uh, don't oversaturate one too hard and fix that. Try to be conscious of that. Because when you're... When you're building buildings, a lot of times you're going to be building buildings in your main as well. Except for, like, the depots will usually go down to, like, your natural. But, like, all your tech and your upgrades and your... All these things will be in the main. So we try to be very conscious of maybe oversaturating, the, like, rerouting the main to the main. When you know the main's going to drop a bit. So that you can not actually drop under 16. You try to maintain as close to 16 at all times as you can. Even while SCVs are doing shit like building a starport, building an engineering bay building a, a, a depot if needed or a third CC which this guy looks like he's going to be doing uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. because that definitely hurts you when you let it sit on 12 for a long time like that yeah this is definitely painful it's going, it keeps going down and this one's just massively oversaturated Okay, so right there, this guy just showed you. Like, you saw Stalkers. This is why having a Reaper also would make a lot of sense. If you saw Stalkers, okay, you're like, okay, yeah, this guy likes uh, Stalker as an opener. He's made more than one. Like, he made an Adept to start, and then he made, like, three Stalkers or four Stalkers. Any open council. Automatically, you can tell this guy's going to go Blink Stalker. Does it have to be aggressive Blink Stalker? No. It could be defensive or aggressive Blink Stalker. Like, he could, he could blink attack you, and he could also take a third. Either one works, or both, even, if he wants to, because a lot of apprentices do that, because they're like, well, I can just blink away, and I won't lose the stalkers, so it doesn't really matter if I attack. Uh, and one thing you can do to make it to where you really are, like, immune to taking damage here is make a missile turret, not in range of the low ground, but in range of killing an observer if it comes to the high ground and giving you vision. You could make it a missile turret, like, right there. And what that missile turret would do is give you detection if an observer ever came to this area anywhere around it and if he is not careful with it it would just die to the missile turret but if you had marines like you do they could just snipe the observer as it comes in and i imagine with how he poked you with stalkers there there is probably an observer in the area yep so you could totally zone that shit out because he wants to blink in your base that's what his go his goal is so make a turret uh when i confirm he is going blink stalkers. Yeah. Uh, does, doesn't matter if he's going aggressive blink stalker or defensive blink stalker. So stalkers is the one thing that Protoss can do that can be both. If they're going to go charge lots first, they're probably going to be really aggressive. If they're going to go adepts first, they're probably going to be really aggressive. Because the reason why is because if you go defensive charge lots or defensive blink stalker, or sorry, uh, not stalker, I said the wrong thing. Adepts or zealots defensively are kind of shit because those units definitely need to hit a window where they're effective otherwise it's just going to fail it's similar to like okay. the concept of your, your reaper early like if it, ha it has a window where it's going to be good and then it just needs to not do it anymore otherwise it's just as useless so stalkers can do both though and the reason why stalkers can do both is because they can disengage whenever they want they're like all right i'm going to be aggressive and now i'm not I'm, now i'm running away from you faster than you can chase so you can't punish this 
That's why stalkers can do both. <laughs> this is around the time where if I want to take a third I kind of need to save and cut the reason um, why is because you're making takes and it's okay. because you're taking gas really heavily so if you again this is something that comes down to the fact that if you wanted to make it so you took your gas for this the purpose of the starport right and you're getting your upgrade, which is great. You're getting your other your upgrades on your your tech labs, on your your raxes, which is great. You're making multiple tanks, which is great. You're ready to make starport units, which is great. But if you want to take like so, what you're doing to yourself this game, for instance, is you're putting yourself in a situation with how delayed your third is and how great, like, how much you're investing into your gas, that this needs to now be an aggressive option for you. So like, you this would make sense the way you've developed your economy. If your plan was aggressive attacks, if you're like, well, I'm going to the second my first two medevacs pop out, I'm loading up and I'm dropping over here or something. Because you're definitely delaying your command center like crazy. So in the future, if you're not going to be like going off right away with your first starport units, maybe don't build that third gas and that fourth gas until after you start the third CC and then start your other gases. Because if you're not going to be doing a timing attack anyways and you're just sitting defensively, do the starport units really matter 20 seconds faster if you're still defensively sieged on your base? He's not going to engage that if you're defensively sieged. And if he does, he's going to get punished and die anyways. The medevacs aren't going to change that fight very much. Like, for, like, the okay. initiation of the fight is what I mean. Okay. Yeah, and because, like, right now, too, if this happens to you a lot as well, two, the two reasons you're really struggling to afford it right now is because your gas is too fast and you're really fucking oversaturated here and you've let yourself really undersaturate here for it like over a minute and a half now like this has been a ever since that gas was saturated this had been, this base has been undersaturated and it's only gotten worse as you've built more buildings so that's a fucking long time that's 250 gas of time right there which is a lot okay and now you can see what I mean it's going it keeps going down this is definitely a bad economy for you Oh, this one keeps just going over the top here. You want a piece of me, boy? Let's have a blast. Yeah, so now what your problem is in this game is that you've put, like, again, like I said, this is so true. You put yourself into an aggressive situation by how late your third was. And you've over-prioritized <laughs> your gas. <coughs> and you fucked your economy a little bit here. So now, the only way you're really going to get a, foot, a strong footing in this game is if you were to do an attack and it did a lot of damage. Because now if you sit there defensively in macro, now, look at this. This is what your third looks like, right here. It's zero SCVs on it, and it's not going to even be done for 50 seconds or so. And this is the Protoss' third. It's already done, and it's already becoming saturated. So, and you, you had a good indicator that it was going to be done as well because of the fact that when the when your marine scattered right here you got killed before you got here no protoss is going to stand here if he's got only a natural because if he stands way the fuck over here and you drop him he's open to so much damage but if you show up here and he's got a base there that needs to be protected it makes sense that he's here because now he's going to guard the edge of his base. And this would give him vision if you're actually dropping him. So he would be able to react faster and go back there. Because he'd have like probably like a pylon, a nexus. It would make sense. So uh, this already indicated like over about a minute ago. A minute and a half ago. Like around 5, 5.10 is when your marine died. That's because I know because I was talking about how good you scouted at like 5 minutes. Which was great. But uh, this marine could have confirmed it again. To know, okay, yeah, there is a third there. And then that would prompt you to attack. If, if you already invested into double gas, it would have made more sense for you to attack. Like, if you would have attacked right now, I bet you would win the game. I'm not even kidding. With... you have like So, okay. You're not just going to win the game. I don't want to say it like that. Because, obviously, there's decision-making that needs to go in hand there. And you're, you're... This is fucking you really bad. The economy in your main. I can't even begin to tell you how bad that is for you. Uh... But your odds of doing well in the game would be higher if you actually went, 
Oh, you're going for a third, and I reacted by going crazy gas? I'm going to attack you now. Like, you should be the one attacking. If you went across the map right now, let's say you brought, like, three SCVs, and you made bunker, 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 set up tanks behind the rocks, you probably could break him. Like, chances are good that that would work. But do, do you do that every game? Definitely not. It's because you set yourself up to be aggressive. Uh, it's probably because I thought I was doing defensive, but it's actually doing too much. Exactly. You're 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 curbing your like because again, it keeps going down. You're just negatively going backwards in economy. Uh, repeatedly, this is so brutal for you. Uh, and you're overdoing. Like you just have too much of an investment to do nothing with it. This is too expensive to do nothing. Definitely be careful with this too. Don't I? I, uh, I like the enthusiasm there, but definitely make sure you group up your whole army if you're gonna go punish Protoss like that. That was uh, risky as fuck because if there wasn't a third there, you could have just threw the game away because you never really confirmed it. So if this guy's meta gaming you and he actually never had a third and you didn't confirm that, uh, it seems like he does, right? It seems like he would, but because especially since now, since it's so late in the game. But, uh, and he hasn't really all in you yet. But let's just hypothetically say there wasn't a third, and he really was all in you right now. And he's like, oh, this guy wants to attack me with a little tiny piece of his army. I'll just run it over. And he blinks aggressively on you with a bunch of charge lots running into your face. You would throw this away, and this would be engaging as this dies. And you just lose the game. So you gotta be really careful. I don't mind, that, again, that's the only reason I'm saying this, is because I don't mind that you attacked him like that. But group up your shit if you do that. Don't ever do half your army like that. That's so sketchy. Okay. Also, this drop, it's uh, going to fail. I, the odds of this drop doing anything are very low. And the reason why is because the only reason why this would ever work is if you were going to do a multi-prong with it. And you were going to get his attention somewhere else and then drop him at the same time. Or if you're going to use... So, there's two ways this works. This kills probes and then it evacuates, or this dies and then you kill third base. It's the only way this makes sense. So this needs to either be a distraction or the in actual initiation. Uh, so think about it like this, okay? If your idea, again, the two options are you kill probes or you kill third base. If you want to kill probes, the way it would work is you engage with all of your army at his third base. Get his attention. Be very conservative. Don't Try to win the fight. Try to poke him to get him over here because you know if you're going to be under army here because you're splitting yourself apart. Odds of you winning the fight are very low. If, so if you take the fight for real, you're probably going to die. But get his attention, poke him, and then back up. And as soon as he's here and you know he's here, boost from like right there into his mineral line and kill probes. And you probably could kill a good like 10 probes. And then as soon as he, uh, as soon as you like he runs the mineral line away, and you see him, or like you, you, you know, he's like on his way back. Load up, boost away. Like you, you got about like eight seconds of probe kill time, and then get the fuck out of there. And then you can poke him again with this. And if he's still here, like so, you could you could actually start killing probes. And then while you're starting to kill probes, move in with this again. And if he's still there, keep killing probes. And if he's not still there, you could go for the third, and you could boost away and, and leave with this. You can rotate it back and forth. You basically pull him around and you attack where he isn't there. Because if you're going to split, that's the only way that works. So the other way, I said, if this was going to kill the third instead, you would start with this, go right into his fucking base with it. It's going to get blinked on and it's going to die. But as soon as he blinks into this, because you're going you're gonna to get him over here and there's no way you're going to evacuate in time. Um, but you're going to kill probes as long as you can. Which, if he reacts fast, you're going to kill basically nothing. But if he reacts slow, you might kill some as well. But if he blinks a lot of his stalkers over here and he gets all of his army over here to deal with your medevac, you could then shove in here and try to snipe the Nexus with your main army and then run the fuck away once you're done. Those are two ways this would work. If this goes by itself, though, all that's going to happen is he's going to react to this by blinking on it. It's going to die and you're going to dedicate or you're going to donate like 10 supply to him. And it's going to do basically nothing. I already think this is just going to be donated since you're not engaging with this too. 
So this is never a good idea by itself. So you get here. I was, yeah. There we go. Ahead, sorry. I, I was confused at this point because I was waiting him to all in me and I thought I was playing defensive, but he's not. So I was using that as a scout. Um, but I understand your point. Um, so speaking of your point, uh, in other games versus Protoss, I kind of do um, what you suggested. But what usually happens is when I my main is outside his third, right? And I have a drop. And then after my main is poking around, I drop and then I want to evacuate my main army back. But those just get angry and chases me and then charge lots are all in my face. And, you know, my main kind of just get chipped away really hard. Should I just kite back all the way home yeah. or? Yeah. That's why okay. Marauders are really good because concussive would, if you have enough Marauders like you do here, you have so much concussive shell that you can throw at him as you kite backwards. Just never stand there though. Never just stand there and hold the line. Always attack, back up, attack, back up. Like shell his army and then just literally run back. Attack, back up. Uh, and try to maximize oh. your your mi like your micro doing that. Try to ma maximize like attacking and then running away. And if you miss an attack, as long as you're always moving, that's still really good because the reason why that's really good is because concussive shell lasts longer than an auto attack cooldown is. So like concussive shells last for like a full second, whereas the attack of a marauder could go off every like half second. So if you actually miss a full attack of a marauder, he still slowed the entire time until you your third attack essentially. Because you missed your second attack. So you still make distance. Uh, okay. And I don't need the stim, right? Because you do, you, do you, now, you do. You do need the stim. I, oh. Because I do now is I just stim and just right click back home. And then <laughs> when I switch back, they're like half gone. So. Yeah. Like if you're going to full on yeah, try to just evacuate, like run like that, you should just, you'd be probably better off uh, loading up your medevacs and then just boosting away. Honestly, but then they okay. got to be really careful about blink stalkers blinking on you and picking your medevacs off, right? But you should, okay. like, I would say it makes more sense to fucking stim stutter backwards and then run home doing that. And he's if he chases okay. you back to your base, he's going to take a lot of losses as well. But you got to try to make sure as well you're not going to tunnel vision that. You need to make units during that process as well. So yeah. if you ever do right click home, for instance, that should only be because you're currently macroing a cycle. And then go back to stuttering again. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so this right here, it, when you said you know you were like playing defensive because you thought it was gonna be aggressive, that's just a misread, right, on the third base. Because definitely has a third, and that definitely does not mean he needs to be aggressive. And all that means that he did was blink stalker defensively. He still poked you with it, but it was actually a defensive opener because he's going for a third base. And then you see he's got a robo bay and shit like that. So another cool thing you can do, if your scout is kind of fucked, like your reaper's dead, and you weren't able to keep it alive or whatever, and you're not really able to, you didn't set up an attack like we just talked about, and you're kind of playing blind, but you got like a faster third so you can spare like another scan, you could scan once again, maybe like, maybe not so deep into the natural this time, maybe more towards like the main, like here, so you can see... If he builds any building at, like, at the bottom of the pylon, if he builds any building on the right side, so again, like right here would be great, because you'd see a good chunk of his main base, because he's got shit on the left and on the right. Uh, and then you could be like, all right, well, what does he have here? That would be a fine scan. Another fine scan would be like right here. And the reason why right there would make sense instead of like right here is because right here doesn't make a whole lot of sense anymore, because you already know if the game is at like seven minutes or like six and a half minutes, which is when you'd want to throw that scan down, uh, that this is going to be fully saturated if he's not already all in you. That's absolutely going to be the case. There's no other question about it. But if you scan like right here, you have a large chance to see his comp in front of his base. So instead of seeing his tech, you can see his composition. Either one of those would work. Cool. And this should be easy to spot because you can have a unit scout this without having to really do much. Like, you could have, uh, uh, yeah, like a Marine walk in and see it. Like, your Marine was standing here for so long, this dude could have easily walked in and spotted that. Stuff like that. But yeah, so this is fucking you up pretty bad. Donating your Marines a second ago, and two Marauder, or your Marauder Marine medevac thing, was fucking you pretty bad. And, uh, your lack of third base being fast. Because again, now look at it. You just set it up. 
you just set this third base up. It's now starting to become saturated. And you're competing against someone with a really highly saturated third base that's been up for a while. Like some of these smashes are already down 300, 200, 100. Gas is down 200. This gas is down a 50. Definitely, you're at a negative here in terms of overall economy. So your army is going to be tiny. Uh, yeah. Your army is not going to be as big as you want it to be, for sure. And like right now, you should already be starting a fourth base. You should definitely have a fourth base start even faster than you do. Because again, you're playing a passive game. You're not playing a hyper aggressive game, and that's fine. You don't have to play a hyper aggressive, uh, hyper aggressive game. Uh, but if you're going to play a passive game, you need to be able to have the macro muscle that you're not giving yourself, which means you need to be taking faster expansions if you're going to play so defensive. There we go. But like you're, you're starting this base when this is already fully saturated. Definitely want to start it a little bit faster than that. Like ideally. When your third base gets set up, if you if you were expanding like faster on time, you'd want to be taking this base to the point to where, as this is fully saturated, this base is now done and being set up with your next probes, more or less. So you'd want to be taking this base when this base is probably like at 10, not 22. Okay. Okay, so this is bold move again. Needs to go with this. If this goes by itself, it's just gonna die. Also, you're flying over active Zonaga Tower. So you just you didn't multi prong at all there. You flew over an active Naga Tower and you you did the same thing your Reaper did, which this is gonna take practice. There's nothing I can tell you about this that's gonna make you better at it. It just takes comfortable like comfort and practice. At executing this everyone has to go through it but like if you notice when you go over here you don't skirt scouting at all you like you don't actually avoid scouting you should have gone a little bit further to the left and up but you so you go right over scouting but then you stop right in his vision like this guy's watching you sit there and you sit there for like two seconds and then you start moving again and then you go this way and you're not boosting at all when you have boost so you're giving this guy so much time and uh, like rela relaxation to just watch you doing this and then counter you doing this. And this would still even be okay if this was actually right there right now. Like over here somewhere. Being more like right to where the point to where as you engage over here, you're ready to engage over here. Like you're, you're ready to like hit both sides at once because wherever he is, you really commit to the other side. Because if you commit to one side and then 25 seconds later you commit to the other side, you're not going to accomplish anything. You're just throwing your army away at that point. Yeah, the, that, that boost needs to be way more preemptive. And this guy, if he wanted to, he could have literally blinked at you again. And you're, yeah. So you're going to be out of range of the tower this time. And he sees you crossing this side. So this is now starting to make a little bit more sense. It's just you're not being as assertive as you should be with your time here. And now this drop right here, I'm not a fan of the drop right here because you're going to go around the outside when you should be just... I would say you've actually concealed yourself for a second here. These medevacs shouldn't be unloading here. They should be still fully loaded up here going here to drop here. Because now you have his attention here. You just went by a pylon and killed it. And there is also an observer watching you over here. So now you know he's coming here. So this army, if you have this way the fuck over here, <coughs> the best way you could use this army, legit, would be to maybe even like load up one medevac, go here, like in the middle line or some shit, and then poke this with your actual army here, and then run away. When, when he arrives, stutter step away. Don't take a fight. Your, your odds of winning the fight are always so low if you're fighting the whole Protoss army and you're such an, you're like... You're splitting yourself apart because you're hitting multiple locations at the same time. That's what you should be doing, though, because you should be splitting yourself apart because you're using just low-tech units versus high-tech units right now. You're using Marine Marauder versus, like, Colossus and Disruptor. Uh, so the more clumped you are, the better it is for him. 
but you shouldn't ever try to take the fight against the real army until you have economy advantages, which you create by pulling him one way and then hitting him the other way, and then making this run away. Because if you kited with this, you take no damage from Colossus, you take no damage from Disruptors, you're just fighting his charge lot and his stalker, that, can, that it's more mobile. And if you're stutter stepping backwards, you're having a part of your army only fight a part of his army because the other part of his army is in fucking heavy siege AOE shit that's slower. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So this unloading here is probably going to do nothing. Let's see. And you're wasting a lot of time as well trying to like drop that shit. I understand what you're doing, but yeah. Now you're hitting a gateway. You're buying him time. 500 damage has already been done. 500 damage, if we divide 500 by 40, what is that? That's, uh, how many times does 4 go into 50? That's 12 times. You could have already killed 12 probes in that amount of damage that you've done here. Right? Like, that would be fucking way more damaging as well than killing one gateway so far. And now you kill the gateway, and then you're getting zoned out by cannon, battery, and duct tape wire. So your whole army dies for the purpose of killing one gateway. Not a good trade. Would have definitely been a good trade, though, if you killed, all, like, the whole mineral line, and then the same outcome happened where you died to DTs. That mineral line dying would have been so much more value for you. And then this right here, too. Let's go back now and talk about this part of the fight as that starts. So this army's sitting here. It gets engaged on. You, sk you stim. You pull back a good chunk of your army versus the AoE shots. That was good. But now you're trying to shove it. And uh, this is definitely a bold move here. The chances of you winning this fight are there, they're there, but I mean, you're gonna take some massive losses here. And if yeah, it's just, there needs uh, to be, I, huh, go ahead. By shove it, do you mean I tried to- Like you, you push into it. it. You push into it is what okay. I mean. Okay. Uh, so you're, you're, you're getting really aggressive there and being aggressive only really makes sense for Terran when you already have the economical advantage. Because think about it like this. If this guy, if you run away from this guy, can he chase you? Not really. Like these units are like, wait, hold on. We'll, we'll walk over there while you run over there. Like we're, we're gonna catch up to you and fight you. So you don't need to fight this. You only really should be fighting this if you think to yourself, I can break this and he can't replace what I can. Like I'll, I'll break this army now because I can replace what dies, but he can't. And that's not the case right now because he's full fucking economy still. So there's no reason why he can't rebuild this if anything dies. So, like, if he's full power economy, you have no advantages to really take a fight. It makes no sense to really take a fight. But if you actually backed up from this, his army would go somewhere else. If you're doing something somewhere else, ideally. And then you could then kill a base, which is economy. Or... If he's fully committed out here and you have medevacs over here, you could actually load up three medevacs and then run the rest of your army back home. and the, Or, like, run it back, like, down here. Just run back. Run away from him. And three medevacs boost up to here and drop into his base. And now what's he going to do with this army if you do that? He's going to go, oh, okay, you disengaged me and you now are engaging me. I'm going to go around and defend myself. And then once he's up here, you disengage again when he, gets, when he arrives with power units. And you could boost back and drop here. Meanwhile, this army that ran down could come right back and hit this base while he's in his main. You want to just pull him around and kill his base where he's not. Because trying to fight the Protoss power when the Protoss is rich is never going to go well for you. Because you're not fighting it with power yourself. You're, you're fighting it with mass cheap shit. This is, your power here is mobility. His power is army like blob fights. And you're giving him the blob fight when you shouldn't be. Because you have the power of mobility, which you're not abusing against him. Okay. And then, meanwhile, at the same time, this guy's prism dropping you, which is annoying. But all things considered, I'd say, uh, good job dealing with the prism drop while you're trying to do a multi prong. Your multi prong kind of failed, but you you dealed with the prism drop uh, relatively fast. You didn't even lose your barracks, so that was pretty good. Got to make sure you repair it, but otherwise, yeah, good shit. That was a nice defense. I would say now that this guy is this kind of a player, try to squeeze in a turret wherever you can. Like, I don't know if you can fit one there. Maybe. I don't think you can, though. Definitely put a turret there, though, if you can. And if you can't fit a turret either there or there, definitely put one, like, right there. I know you can fit one right there. Put turrets on the side of your base so that this guy can't keep doing this to you. Okay. 
And now this is getting in a situation with how many units he just threw away that you're now stuck on defense. And now this is going to lose you the game because your army is not ready to fight that. If this guy gets the worst disruptor shots of his life, you will win. But if he gets any type of a decent disruptor shot, you will die. Make sure as well. You gotta really be careful here. You gotta definitely uh there this is something that's more subtle, okay? But do you do you play StarCraft with game sounds? Uh yes. Do you have music on when you play as well? Do you have anything else that's uh, have a giving audio? No, I, I turn off music. So there's two ways to see you're gonna hit by DTs. One is you can actually see them if your if your eyes are noticing that. Like it's like a shimmer that moves around on the screen. And it's like it literally just moves around your army and you can tell it's like beating your ass. Another way is you can hear the DTs attack even though you can't see them. It has this distinct sound effect and I can't really make it with my mouth. But it's like a swipe at your unit. It, DTs only like you could literally just listen to it. Like go to a unit tester and like have a DT attack something like another unit. And you could be like, okay, that's the sound effect. If you ever hear that, you should immediately be scanning that. Because you've actually had a few fights now where... I'll give it to you up here because you're probably not watching it and you're probably multitasking and distracted. But here, you're running into DTs and letting him fucking smash you and this should never be happening. You should need to be scanning this because DTs die in half a second if you scan it. But if you don't scan it, they're going to destroy you. Overall though, you, you did scan, so I'm glad that you didn't eventually that, scan. That's... That's when I realized he had to Yeah, it's got to realize a little faster. It just takes practice. And again, that's something that takes like experience and comfort in the situation that you're in. Just like we talked about with like how you need to move your medevacs. You just need to practice it more and get more, make it feel more comfortable when you do it. And it'll just get better. There's nothing I can say that's going to make that happen to you. That's literally an experience thing. Uh, but I that fight went okay-ish for you because you got rid of a lot of his power at the cost of a lot of your bile. The only problem for you right now though is is you haven't done any damage to his economy and he has done damage to yours. So now this is not what you want to be happening because now you have no way to limit his remax whereas he does have a way to limit yours. He's starting to fuck you up with your reinforcements and your base and this is not ideal for you. So it's literally the game is being turned backwards on you and this is obviously becoming a problem for you now. And this is now putting you on the back foot, which is going to kill you because you can't recover because you just like the, the overall point I'm trying to make here is, is you just traded your army, which would have made sense if he was on the back foot and you had a way to fully remax, but it's reversed. You just traded your army away for some of his tech units and you can't remax it. So now you're just dead. So this attack would have made sense if it was reversed and you had been doing damage to his economy, not the other way around. Similar to what I said earlier, you never want to take a fight with him, ideally, until you know you've broken his economy a bit. Because that fight actually was not bad for you. Even though you lost the fight, you broke all of his tech units except for one Colossus. That's actually a win in, in the Terran's book there. But it only makes sense to take that fight when you know you broke his economy already. So if he's going to attack you, and you're like, well, vibe, well, he's attacking me, though. What do I do? Fucking go base trade. Like, just, you're going to lose the fight if you take the fight. And you know he can remax everything that you just died with. Like, if that's the case, you're just going to die. Maybe take a base trade and use your tanks in the base trade. Use your walls instead of trying to fight him in the middle of the open. And then have this army actually wrecking his base so he can't remax again. That's not ideally the first option either, by the way. You don't always want to be like, well, I always have the base trade. But you've gotten into this position because... That was wasted over here earlier. Your drop over here was wasted. Your economy was fucked in your main for such a long time. Your gas was fucked about your development of your third. Your third was super late. Your fourth was super late. All these things made you fall behind. And then you didn't really utilize that attack over here the best. Because you ran in. You shoved a really powerful AoE army. And then you didn't really accomplish anything economy-wise. When there's a lot of ways you could have rotated around to do that. So all those things are why you got put in this position to be behind here to die.
Okay. So, questions about anything? Uh, so, like, I'm not... I'm, because I'm still practicing the multi-prong thing, uh -huh. um, I know every time when I tr try to do the... So, okay, so this is what I do every time. I try to position my units on the map, and then I go back to my base and do whatever I feel like I need to do, and then I want to initiate the attack. That's why when you saw my third three medivacs on the top of the map just chilling there, uh -huh. I didn't realize um, there were... Um, the vision for him yeah. at that point. Now I do. I'm, wait, wait, wait. A... I want to stop you for one second. I yes. sorry to interrupt you, uh, but I would say get in the habit of doing this, okay? Because I know, I know, okay. and you can. I, I hope I don't make you lose your train of thought. But from now on, whenever you want to drop somebody, drop uh -huh. them in a way that's going to go around an area that's going to be more safe. So like, go along the edge of the map, for instance. And then, uh -huh. if you ever want to be like, well, I might not catch it the second I get to the guy's base. Like, I'm not going to be like, every single time as my medivacs are approaching the middle line, that's when I tap to them, and I'm like, okay, let's drop in micro. If you're like, okay, well, sometimes I miss it by five seconds, and sometimes I miss it by three seconds. It happens. Always make the end point of your destination in the open airspace. Okay. Not in the middle of fucking nowhere, because that's how you lose your medivacs. Okay. Uh, the the question was, is that a okay approach or it's not okay where I have to be on track of where my meta is? It's okay. No, it's okay. It's totally fine. Because if you're in the open airspace, like I just said, he can't punish that. Mm -hmm. If he blinks here, it's out of range. If he blinks here, it maybe one stalker shoots it. So you, another thing you should be doing is going shift command, like to where you can best gauge and go, okay, that was fought right there. Probably in the middle of the fucking air here where it's going to be really hard for me to attack either side on either left or right if i'm like right in this area right here and then so what you could do is you'd be like medevac move and then hold shift or like like uh you know hold shift to like rally point it to like the edge of the map and then hold shift here to move command it and then once you move command it to the final place you're going to be at just keep holding shift and hit h for hold position and then a cool thing um, you can do as well here's a cool trick you can do if you tell your medevac to boost after you've told it to do all these commands if you just tell it to boost it still keeps its shift Q command. Uh, so I don't. I, I release shift and press boost, right? Yeah. Well, like what I mean is, I'll give this will make sense. If you told it, medevac, load up right here. Okay. Shift, click, 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 hold, and now the medevac is right there, and it's literally going like this. And right. Now, you, you went back and macroed all your SCDs and all your barracks and all your factories, and you came back nine seconds later, right now, and you went boost, it would then go faster and then slower. And then you go macro, macro, macro. It's still going. You keep macroing, you keep macroing, your thing is, boost is ready again. It's still going this way, and you're like, now boost again. It boosts really fast. It doesn't stop the shift queue. It literally just it speeds up the medevac. So you could be like, okay, I'm going to periodically grab my medevac and boost it whenever I can, but... <coughs> Sorry. It, the boost itself doesn't need to be part of the shift Q command. It can just be activated whenever you want it to be activated, and it will maintain the shift Q command. Okay. So that's really nice at like making sure you're maximizing that, and you don't have to worry about fucking up your previous commands. Okay. Cool. Yeah. But um, I, uh, I, I'll give you one more tip, too. I kind of touched on it earlier, but this is something you really need to work on. You mm -hmm. need to work on preserving your units... And then even if they, he sees it, that's totally fine. Because if he sees it, if you ever sit here for a while, uh, this is something, a big tip, okay? If you get here and you want to go in right away and you're paying attention, try to do it. If you got there and there's not a lot of time has gone by and you can see what happens there, especially if you have another army lined up over here. And you can do the things I said earlier about push and pull with the Protoss. Pull him one way, push him the other way. And as soon as he comes one way, either try to evacuate if you can or play conservative, stutter step backwards. Don't try to take fights unless you've broken an economy. But always push if he's not in the area. But if you ever find yourself in a situation where, like, let's say a medevac was sitting here for 12 seconds, and you're like, well, fuck, I have nothing else over here yet. Like, my army's still walking across the map right now, and it's been, like, 12 seconds that he might have been watching me here with, like, an observer. If you're about ready to push into the base, fucking scan first before you do it. Like, scan here. Because if he has a bunch of stalkers waiting for you to get over the, over the cliff, he's just going to blink at you when you commit to it, and he's going to kill you. And then your whole multi-prong is over. So if you scan that and you go, oh, his army's there. Because he, he's been watching me for the last 10 seconds here. Uh, I'll just push this now. 
and then I'll pull him away. And as soon as I push this and I see him coming with his main army and I now stim pack stutter backwards, then I drop with my medevac. You need to be really more, you need to always think about how you can line up your attacks together. Don't think about them as isolated experiences, like where it's like, this is one thing by itself. And that's going to be one thing by itself. It needs to be combined. Terran does not do well unless you combine your attacks. It's like a combo. It has to be combined. Okay. Um, acro wise, do you see any like huge flaws or? Uh huh. I know your main. Uh, tip, a tip the, for the main. A tip, yeah, that was the biggest one, and also your decision making on your gas. That was a big one too. If you took way too much gas, way too fast, for your build, mm -hmm. you went you went for something that, it, even though it seems like it's defensive, you don't need a super quick all gas starport to be defensive. You just that would only make sense if it was air units that were attacking you. If it was like void race and you wanted to make Vikings. Medivacs aren't really a defensive option. Like, they're good units. Don't get me wrong. They're great. But they shouldn't be prioritized over economy, even if you're playing defensive. Because okay. you, you'll still get them early enough. It's just that if you're playing defensive, the goal there is to macro. And if you're macroing, you're going to get way more units off for longer than if you just cut economy for a while because you have a super late third to make just a couple medivacs. Like, it's not going to give you a better trade-off. Uh, but the, the tip for the main, as soon as you want to take your second gas in your main base, I would say re-rally your main to your main mineral line just for like an extra like three SCVs or something or like four SCVs. And this is also probably going to be around the time when your natural has like 14 SCVs on it. And the reason why that makes sense is because if you keep building buildings in your main base, every time you rip off SCVs in your main to build a building, you still maintain 16. Because this game, you literally went all the way down to like 8 SCVs on the main out of 16. And you had like 28 on the natural. That's really fucked. Okay. Um, so, if opponent is going air I, I and I want to play defensive, I I go to factory and then I make starport for Vikings defend. But I if I don't produce out of factory, I actually don't need um, 3 gases. It depends what else you're making. What else you can, are you just making marines with Vikings? No, no, because you said one gas supports three racks, and then the other gas supports the factory, and then the third gas. It's supports yeah, yeah, yeah. The, so don't don't. I, I don't want you to take that so literally. I just want you to understand the economy investment development, because it's okay. not exact. What I that's not that's not exactly accurate. Like a hundred percent. It's just the concept of you're exploding your gas too fast when you already have enough to afford what you have. Okay. Because for like realistically, one gas can't actually support three three racks right off the bat. It can't. But the reason why it can is because you have the gas for so long while you're building into three racks. That's why it does not exact. Is to that what that means? Uh, okay. Because they can make the reaper, and then you're just mining gas while you're making reactor and marines, and it builds up a bit, which allows you to afford stim pack. So that's why that like that happens for that. Like the timing of how it goes. Your three racks was totally fine. I loved your three racks, but you exploded double gas when you took your factory and that's way more than you need because you've already invested into the upgrade for your barracks you not only had plus one weapons but you also had uh, stim pack so that it, that cost is gone and it's permanent like that's a one-time thing and then you're, you now you have that all that gas that was invested into that you're now going to generate more gas than what three racks is worth out of that if that makes sense because you're not even making triple marauder you were making two marauders and a marine and one gas could afford two marauders no problem Okay. Cool. That that's it for me. All right, man. Thank you. Well, I hope it helps, and uh, definitely, uh, I'll have this to you by like again, like tomorrow, as always. And uh, yeah, yeah. definitely try to really work on your combos with your attacks, mm -hmm. and you'll if you get really if you start really feeling it, where again the whole concept is, I don't know where Protoss is. What do I want to do here? What's my goal? Kill the base or kill workers? If I kill base. I distract the drop first, get his attention to drop, then I kill base, because I pull him to the drop first. Or if I want to kill workers, I distract him with push first, I stutter step and disengage. I have no intentions to really push that, because when you stutter, you kite all robo units and it makes it way easier. And then you, so they're like out of the fight, because you're not trying to shove into it. And then you drop the base. Either way, you're going to do damage, as long as you set it up properly. And either way, you should always be ready to pounce on his base within literally two seconds of wherever his army is not. So if he po if he pokes your uh, 
like the point I mean here is is if you want to kill workers and you go okay I'm poking you here get his attention over here Protoss arrives within two seconds of him arriving you need to be boosting into his base ideally within one second would be great like 0.5 of a second would be amazing but like have it on a hotkey and you can literally do it on the mini map be like I'm here okay two boost right click right there on the mini map just like you right click there on the mini map but you're not actually there yet and then you could go there, like double tap it as your medevac's already crossing over and like carpet drop it. And that would be great. That'd be fucking huge. That'd be so good. But as long as you as long as you're within like two seconds, you're doing a good job. If it takes you like eight seconds to drop into his base, you're like, you're here, you got his attention, and then you're backing up and you're all the way like down here now, and now you drop his main, it's not gonna work. Because you're allowing Protoss to relocate himself again, and his his attention now is no longer disrupted. And he can now go, oh, medevac, pff, blink on it, kill it. And it will not do anything. You'll be like, wow, Protoss is fucking Imba. So I hope that makes sense. You need to be really assertive about combining your attacks. Or else it will feel really bad. Um, so if I aim to kill his workers, which my, which uh, which means I put my focus on his main. But if he pulls out workers, do I chase or I just kill the base? You can kill the base. Totally kill the base. I would say okay. the more marauders you have, the more likely you should kill the base. But if you only have marines... Definitely, you can start working the base down. That's fine. Uh, but I would say that's... Don't be greedy about it. Like, lo like if you know if he's not chasing your army anymore and a couple seconds has gone by and you don't know where he is, definitely boost up and like go over to the edge. And then you can redo it again. Okay. And now next time, you could even be like, okay, well, how about I have another medevac over here and I can work on workers again here. I have another medevac that's up over here. I fly this way and I sit here and I boost into the natural and I poke his third. And you can literally do that or you could be like, okay... I'm just going to boost and drop, and I'm just going to leave it. If I'm going to do, like, triple, and triple's above my skill level, I can't really do all three at once. How about I just get his attention, really focus on the attention part, and then grab these Marines and just stim them once and just let them do whatever they're going to do. And then focus okay. on this. And then once this is disengaged and I know he's not chasing me, then try to go back and grab it again and do it. But if, it, if, it, if he happens to, like, warp and shit or run away from you while it's happening, you're still getting a good trade if he's not mining resources. That's a lot of... You're disrupting his economy, like, crazy repeatedly. But ideally, okay. if, you, if you can handle it, microing all of them would be ideal. Like, if you can actually, like, salvage them and keep them alive as long as possible, it puts more pressure on Perdos. And really good Terrans, like Masters Plus, like GM Terrans, can literally... The thing that's annoying about them, against for how they deal with Perdos, is they don't lose their units. They don't try to force damage the first time they attack, but it might be attack number five, attack number three, attack number six. One of these attacks is eventually going to do some fucking damage. But they don't lose their shit. And every time the game progresses, there's more like repeated holes that Protoss has to keep covering if the Protoss is going for shit like slow units that are really powerful. This is Protoss do this all the time. Colossus, 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 Disruptor, Disruptor, Storm. They always do shit like this. And it makes the army ridiculously powerful, but it makes it really immobile. So it makes drops have way more potential. Yeah, that's all my questions. All right, man. Well, I wish you the best Thank of you. luck against Protoss. Go fuck him up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was actually thinking if I can't make the Masters, like let's say in another year or two, I'll just switch to Protoss. <laughs> yeah, if you want to. <laughs> I mean, it works, right? I'd be like, okay, you want to go Protoss? I got a build for you. Just make charge lots. <laughs> You're like, wow, vibe. I'm, I'm Masters already. It only took a week. <laughs> yeah. All right, dude. Well, uh, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, thanks again for doing coaching lesson, and I'll, uh, uh, I, yeah, I'll talk to you again next time, man. Yeah, see you next month. You, uh, are you taking Christmas off? No. Probably you are. I'm not. No. I, uh, so I don't know. I, I, I'll i definitely be able to, at every, and I'll say this, every month of the year, I should be available okay. at some point in the month. Um, okay. All the time. And you can always email me, and I'll give you an idea as to, like, you know, the closer you email me to, like, that month the more of a realistic idea I'll have for that time frame, like availability and shit. But I'll pretty much be available like indefinitely every month, like at some point. Okay. For sure. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, good luck. Okay. I'll talk to you next time, man. Okay. See you. Bye. All right. See you. All right, guys. That has been a lesson with uh, our boy Shangy again. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. This was a diamond level lesson again for TVP on the Terran's bio perspective. But uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you guys uh, have success in your own games. 
And I'll see you in the next video, whatever it might be. Subscribe, subscribe if you like the channel, guys. And uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.